fabrication of fiber using double crucible technique. So there are a number of methods for fabrication of optical fibers. One of the most effective and cheapest method is a double crucible technique of manufacturing of optical fibers. So this double crucible technique consists of two crucibles made up of either platina or silica which is placed inside an electrical furnace. When this the material inside the crucible is heated with an electrical furnace to a molten state, fibers can be drawn. So now let us see how this double crucible technique is used to manufacture or to draw optical fibers. So this crucible consists of, this system apparatus consists of two crucibles. One is the outer crucible and the other one is the inner crucible. The outer crucible consists of cladding material, a purified and highly purified powders of either glass or plastic is filled in the outer crucible as cladding material and the inner crucible consists of core material. Now when this furnace, electrical furnace is switched on, large amount of heat is produced inside the furnace. So this furnace can produce a temperature of about 1200 degree centigrade. This can produce a temperature of about 1200 degree centigrade. So due to this high temperature, this material inside the crucible starts to goes to a molten state, starts to melt and goes to a molten state. So in this molten state and dopant such as thallium which, which has a high rate of diffusion in silica is used to maintain the refractive index between the core and the cladding. That is a dopant such as thallium with high diffusion rate, high rate of diffusion in silica is used as a dopant to maintain the refractive index between the core and the cladding. The material inside the crucible is in the molten state and it starts to squeeze through the outlet of the crucible. So this is the outlet of the crucible. Once when it uh, once when it reaches the molten state, due to pressure, the fibers are drawn in the form of wires by the outlet of the crucible. The diameter of the uh, fiber which is drawn can be maintained by this diameter control. So a desired the diameter can be obtained by controlling the diameter by using this diameter control. And finally, optical fiber coated with polyethylene jacket is obtained. So this is how an optical fiber is obtained by using a double crucible technique. So this is one of the cheapest method and most effective method of manufacturing all type of optical fibers. material based on the number of modes and based on the refractive index. So based on the material, it is further classified into two different types, glass fibers or plastic fibers. Depending upon the number of modes, again it is classified into two different types as single mode and multi-mode optical fibers. Depending upon the refractive index, it is again classified into two as step index optical fibers and graded index optical fibers. So first let us consider, let us classify the optical fibers depending upon the material. So the optical fibers are made up of either glass or plastic. So the plastic, a glass material can be silicon oxide, SiO2, the core can be of SiO2 and the cladding can be of P2O3 SiO2 or the core can be GeO2 that is gallium oxide and silicon dioxide. The combination of gallium oxide and silicon dioxide can be a core and silicon dioxide alone can be a cladding material. So this is how these are the two different types of material for manufacturing glass optical fibers. So in case if it is of pl plastic optical fibers, the core material can be of polyethylene methacrylate. The core can be polyethylene methacrylate or the cladding can be a copolymer. Any type of copolymers can be used as a cladding material. 
and one more type is polyesterine can also be used to manufacture optical fibers where polyesterine is used as an core material and meta uh, methyl metacrylate is used as an cladding material so this is how depending upon the material it is classified into two different types such as glass optical fibers and plastic optical fibers the glass materials may be silicon dioxide as core and cladding may be p2o3 sio2 and geo2 and sio2 can be used as core material and sio2 can be used as cladding material in case of plastic optical fibers poly methyl methacrylate can be used as a core material with any type of copolymers can be used as a cladding material or polyesterine can also be used to manufacture plastic optical fibers with and cladding material of me methyl methacrylate so depending upon the number of modes again it is classified as single mode optical fibers and multi mode optical fibers so in case of a single mode optical fiber the core diameter is very very less of the order of 50 to 100 micrometers that is the core the diameter of the core is very less of the order of 50 to 100 micrometers so the core can propagate only one light at a time so it is called as single mode optical fibers and the cladding may vary from 100 to 200 micrometers and the polyethylene jacket the outer protective jacket may vary from 750 to 1000 micrometers so in case of optical fibers the numerical aperture ranges from 0. 08 to 0.1 it ranges from the numerical aperture for a single mode optical fiber ranges from 0.08 to 1 the entire diameter of the fiber optical fiber varies from 750 to 1000 micrometers so these type of optical fibers are called as single mode optical fibers in case of multi mode optical fibers the core diameter in case of multimode optical fibers the core diameter is much more bigger so it can propagate number of modes inside the core so it varies from 250 to 350 micrometers that is the diameter of the core varies from 250 to 350 micrometers so if the diameter is bigger large number of modes can be transmitted inside the optical fiber and the cladding varies from 250 to 500 micrometers and the entire diameter and the outer jacket varies from 800 to 1200 micrometers and the outer jacket varies from 800 to 1200 micrometers meters and the numerical aperture in case of a multimode optical fiber the numerical aperture varies from 0.12 to 0.5 the numerical aperture varies from 0.12 to 0.5 for a multimode optical fiber next based on the refractive index of the optical fiber it is again classified into two different types one is step index optical fibers and the other one is graded index optical fibers so in case of a step index optical fiber the refractive index of the core cladding varies step wise so depending upon the refractive index the optical fibers are further classified into two different types such as step index optical fibers and graded index optical fibers graded index optical fibers so in case of step index optical fibers the refractive index of the core and the cladding will vary step wise will vary step wise so these type of optical fibers are called as step index optical fibers so can you see so it varies in the form of a step step wise so it is called as a step index optical fibers so one more type is called the graded index of 
optical fibers. So, in case of graded index optical fibers, the axis of the core will have the maximum refractive index and the refractive index will gradually decrease and it will be minimum as it approaches the core cladding interface. At the interface of the core and the cladding, the refractive index will be minimum and at the axis of the core, the refractive index of the refractive index of the core will be maximum at the axis of the core and it gradually decreases as, as it approaches the core cladding interface. So, if you see, if you see this diagram, the refractive index Na, Nb, Nc. So, in this case what happens? Na is greater than Nb. Similarly, Nb is greater than Nc and it goes on. So, now what happens? The refractive index of the core at the axis of the core is maximum and it gradually decreases as it approaches the core, core cladding interface. So, these type of optical fibers are called as graded index optical fibers. So, this is how an optical fiber is classified depending upon the material, depending upon the number of modes and depending upon the refractive index of the 